Welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Washington, D.C. I'm Marshall Cycliff in the booth with Kenji Agashira down in the feature match area. <coughs> We've got round six action. Two teams that are 5-0. and oh. <coughs> Oliver Two, Shahar Shenhar, and Andre Strasky facing off against Jan, uh, Jan Kassander, Dominic Prosek, and Niels Mule. And we're underway here with a pair, not just one, but two Lanawar Elves. Mm -hmm. Elveses? Elves. Well, but one is Lanawar Elves. So is two. Oh. Two Lanawar Elves. Ooh, I don't think that's... No, I think it's Elveses. Trixie Elveses. Elveses? Elveses. Okay. Lock that in. Okay. Well, Sport Crown foul. It's a follow-up play for Strasky, though. It's not going to do a whole lot here. Kind of like how Niels did it a little better. <laughs> hey, turn three. Yeah. Cavalry. Okay. Call the Cavalry. Cavalry has arrived. 2-2-2 two, 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 Vigilance knives, uh, Knights. Excuse me. <laughs> knights is. Knives. Knights is. Good enough. And there's your boy, Valid Omnivore. We have seen that card do serious oh, yeah. work today. It's just very, very good. Yeah. Also, Andre setting himself up well for the next turn where, at the minimum, he's going to be able to play land and kick Grove from the ashes. He may even have more than that. Mullet just sort of flicks the two. <laughs> they do have vigilance. Knights. Yeah, they do. Looks like he has an adamant will in his hand. So remember, Andre's omnivore is a 4-4 four -four right now because that's Spore Crown. But this lines up real nicely. Ooh, but oh. wait a minute. No, don't do it. Yeah, don't do gift of growth without kicker. I would get the job done, but it not would, in a way that you'd be really happy. He might not realize it's a 4-4. Four -four. Well, I, I see he's consulting a teammate, so he must he must see it now. He's still holding on to that gift of growth, though. Don't do it, Niels. I, I think he's consulting which one's better in this scenario, but not because of the right <gasps> reason. Okay, but kick it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's going to cost him all of his mana for the turn. Interesting, though. That's good. So he, he's valuing the indestructible later on versus the more, more pump. Yep. Why? Uh, versus more power is usually better, right? Not necessarily. I, th I think versus black and versus, you know these pools, people are going to be running maximum removal. He probably has an important creature that he has in his hand already that he's you know, okay. going to want to protect later on in the game. Yeah, it's just tough because a lot of the removal in black doesn't care. Or at least some of it. No, I guess some of it. Some of Vicious it, yeah. Offering is kind of the premium common that doesn't, but it does blank eviscerate. It does not work with... Settle the score? Settle the score. I think Vicious Offering, Settle the Score, Eviscerate, and Fungal are the ones that are at Uncommon. Right. Cast Down does count as well. Interesting. But vicious Offering doesn't, like, that's still negated by Adam and Will. Correct. So it's only Settle the Score that he's, he has to be worried about. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily true, though, right? I guess if it's on a big creature, you're assuming. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's ca Untamed Kabu, right? It's a 5-5. Five sure. five. That's the only creature he'd be using it on right now anyways. Fair. All right, well, there is that Grove from the Ashes from Andre. Did not get any second or third color. Yeah, interesting. Almost always expect to see an island. Yep. Some Tatiova. Yep. But not this time. It seems pretty consistent that Ooh. every one of these uh, teams has a black-green deck. History of Benalia. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The black-green deck has been the most ubiquitous that we've seen. Oh, with, with the call of the cavalry already on the battlefield. That's right. That represents a heck Ooh. of a lot of damage in a few turns. Yeah, 16 damage. Holy moly. Oof. Is that and good? honestly, Is that good? <coughs> yeah, that last turn for Strosky was pretty slow. All he did was kick grow. He's going to need to do something really impressive here because – Niels is kind of doing it all, right? He's yep. going wide and tall. Yep. <laughs> it's hard to deal with that. This is the important turn where Niels does not have that adamant will, so Eviscerate would be great on the Pegasus. Something to that effect if he has it. Otherwise, he's going to start taking six in the air with the Pegasus jumping the Untamed Kavu. Oh, yeah. And that's already a three-turn cluck by itself. And then you have the History of Benelia about to pop off, too. Yeah, not looking good for Strosky. His options right now are Crack Memorial of Folly, Play Land, Play Thalid Omnivore, or Play Dark Bargain. Those are his, that's what he can do. He might have to just bargain here and, and try to find an answer to that uh, I'll tell you what, Corsair. I think that's what I would do at yep. this point. Well, because the, the Omnivore the is not good enough, right? Immediate threat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the really problem problematic thing here, though, for Strasky is that even if he does find an answer for the Corsair, he still has his hands yes. full. Yes, yep. 
But, I mean, you got to take small steps, you know. Like baby or? Uh, like toddler. Toddler, toddler, toddler steps. steps here. Okay. Andre not exactly playing at lightning speed here, but he does go for the dark bargain. Uh-oh. Oh, there's Ooh, a vicious there's offering. Vicious All right, offering. that's the perfect timing. But he is compelled to use it on the courser at this point? Right. Ugh. Guess... Since he has his own Kavu, he's okay. Okay. Yeah, there, there's not much sense in killing the opposing Kavu because then you're still just taking three in the air every turn and you still have to worry about the, the ultimate. Did he discard a, a swamp? Was that what he discarded the bargain? Um. Yeah. Just making sure. I, I didn't see if he discarded. It must so. have been. Yeah, this is where Niels is going to wish he had that gift of growth instead of the adamant will, though, which is kind of funny. I don't think he has an adamant will, though. Yeah, he has an adamant will in his hand. He, he just drew that card, though. There's one still on the table. Oh, okay. Where? Right next to his hand. No, he drew that one. That's his draw for the turn. He hasn't played a card yet. Oh, he didn't play a land this turn? No. Oh, I, I, am I crazy? No, uh, he, he, he played a knight. He put a knight into play from the history of Benalia. But right. No land. Okay. Yeah, I think it was the Pegasus Courser. Gotcha. That, we that looked, was maybe that looked well. like Adam yeah. Well, Okay, fair enough. That makes a lot more sense then. So Andre waiting for he combat. He probably just drew Adam and Will. But <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> the fact that Andre's waiting for combat has, you know, potential blowout, but looks like that was not the case. But he did end up actually killing the Kavu. Yep. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, how about Song of Freely? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah, again, I'm a little surprised, but I guess Andre figures that he just might as well kill the biggest creature since the history is about to uh, hit its final saga, right? That's right. Next turn, the, the full final chapter, the rather. Full chapter yeah. will be told, and uh, it's not good news for Strosky. I think he's making sure that uh, it doesn't yeah, more produce doesn't knights. Make knights. It makes soldiers. Wow, Niels Mola's deck looks unreal mm. <laughs> right now. Yeah. All right, well, this is the alternate line that we talked about before. Folly get back Omnivore. All right, and that is, again, a 4-4 because that's four crown valid. But that's not big enough. Not versus the Knights. No, it's just a trade-off for the Knights after Chapter 3 goes. Boy, oh boy. And if Andre manages to survive that, then he's going to be facing even more damage the next turn thanks to Song of Freilis. So draw. There you go. Main phase. Trigger, trigger. So four, four threes with Vigilance. Two, one, ones. Three, one, ones, rather, with the Alana War Elf and then also the Pegasus Courser. That's right. Uh, Andre's still at a healthy life total. Seal away was the draw step, it looks like. Which actually looks kind of poor pretty here. Pretty bad, <laughs> yeah. But that usually means you're also winning. Right, that's true. <laughs> so he does have that going for him. I like this. It look, looks like uh, Niels is just going to attack with the largest. The problem is, it's going to work out kind of well for Andre here, right? He gets to block all three like this and then sack the uh, Spore Crown to the Thalid Omnivore if he wants to preserve his Omnivore. Mm. So it does reduce it by one, but also back up by two, so right. it's a 5-5. Five, five. Right. I should say this was a good attack for Andre's perspective. Oh, okay. Yes. I think if Niels was going to make that attack, he should have maybe attacked with a few more creatures since he has the seal away back up against the Omnivore anyways. Just send them all in. Yeah. Like, I think he just threw away a few creatures and some damage for no reason. Okay. believe that Andre has Soul Salvage in his hand. But he has been under immense pressure, and it is not going to let up. Yeah, let's see if... Six creatures on the battlefield for Niels. Oh, okay. He wants to get his last card, but the problem is on the battlefield here. Yeah, let's see. So if Niels had gotten those three extra point of damage last turn by attacking with the three 1-1s one as well, 
Next turn, he'd be hitting for five in the air. And let's see. Block, block, block. Yeah, he would have had lethal. Looks like Niels is just going to decide to cast Seal away. You'll note that it only targets tap creatures your opponents control, so he's not compelled to take the Pegasus course. Right. right. This is actually a really close game. Ten apiece, but this is a big turn here. All right. For Niels. Get some dice out. Yeah. Get a whole box of them and just dump them on the battlefield. And we talked about this card earlier, Kenji, but Song of Fraley's Chapter 3 is easy mode as far as attacks go. You just go all of them. Yeah. The, the thing is, he does get Trample, which might still be lethal now because Andre didn't have a follow-up creature uh, in addition to the Skin Witch. He has 14 total power to put out. Yeah, and I think that's and just exactly it's lethal, 11, right? And 11 toughness for Strosky. Oh, you can't do this. You're going to take extra trample damage. Yep. So, yeah, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, game. Yeah, unfortunately, that wasn't going to work out for Andre Strosky because, as you mentioned, once the blocking creature's gone, if the attacker has trample, all of that damage can go to the player. Wait, so... And that's what happened. Did Niels not actually have lethal, though, if Andre didn't sack the creature? He only had seven damage then, right? I think so. Oh, okay. All right. Wow, a little, little misstep by mo both players there, I think. But in the end, uh, Song of Freely's got the job done either way. Yeah, that was a very weird sequence down the stretch there. Right, yeah. <laughs> Are those all tragic poets? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's good with History of Vanellia, I guess. Actually, we saw that at Dallas. Remember the two History of Vanellia, two Tragic Poet? In deck? Dallas, that's yeah. right. <laughs> but here, I don't uh, know if this... Like, here, let me take a look at his deck. But, you know, if I have Song of Fraley's History of Vanellia and, like... Seal any away? Other, yeah, Seal away. Uh, I guess that one doesn't really maybe, count, yeah. But any other... I'm looking right now. Whose deck is that? Neil Smola? Tragic Poet could be the best card in that deck. Let's see here. Avon Sentry, Banalish, Marshall. Oh, whoa, he's got one of those, too. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is very much a Tokens Go Wide deck. He has two copies of Charge in the main deck as Ooh, well. well he, and he has two Call of the Cavalry, so he can really go wide. Okay, so one History of Banalia. Quende, Corsair, COA, Sarah, Angel. Okay, fine. Green, Veloth Gorger, Gift of Growth, two Lanowar Elves, one Primordial Worm. I guess you do what you got to do. Two Song of Fraley's, two Sapherd, two Sapherd, my goodness, Sport Crown Thalid, and the Untamed Kavu. He also is running a Jousting Lance, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Lance is very good. And then he has two Memorial to Unity. So it makes sense why he's not, why he didn't end up playing any of the six copies of Tragic Poet <laughs> that he ended up with. Oh, he, he has six. <laughs> yeah, he has six of them, yeah. one foil. But that makes sense. Uh, with only two really good targets, it wouldn't be worth it. Right. Though he's close. I mean, one, one more target, maybe? Looks like couple. he took out a charge for a Baird this time. Interesting. Yeah. Baird doesn't seem super good against Strosky, but it's a fine card. Uh, I mean, Strosky's on green, black, so right, but saplings kind of go wide sometimes. Yeah, but they really don't. I mean, like, the way this game was going here, what was what was Trotsky attacking with? 5-5 five, five, Trample Vigilance and or an Omnivore. Right. It's also good versus the Omnivore, though, because if you, if you attack with multiple creatures, you have to invest multiple mana to play for the bear tax, and then you can't sacrifice to Omnivore, you know? I mean, it's not great. I wouldn't call it great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you still just attack with the Omnivore and get Right, him. right. I like Baird, though, just as a card. Yeah. Like, I'm a little surprised to see it in the sideboard, though. I can see why. It's probably not like I'd rather have completely in line with what he's doing. I mean, right, it's exactly. better than it, maybe it's better than the second charge. Yeah, probably but so. But the two chart call the cavalry. Oh boy, Benalish Marshall. He's doing it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at Table A. Oliver two versus Jan Sander. Looks like Goblin Barrage just took out Danitha Capuchin. 
And that lets G2 Journey Mage into the red zone. So blue red in the hands of Jan. Oliver's on the white. Oliver took the first game pretty quickly, it seemed. Yep. We should mention that, too, in the middle table, Shahar Shanhar gave up game number one to Dominic Prosek. Is that Quende? Yeah. Yep. And that makes the 2-2 two -two a 3-2. It does indeed. Quende's actually played out a little better than I thought when oh, I yeah. first saw it. Oh, yeah. It's a scary card. I think it's definitely gone up a little bit. Yeah. Just enough random first strikers that you'll be playing in your deck anyways, plus cards like Jousting Lance, which is a common. Yeah, Jousting Lance really is what makes Quende mm. the scariest. Although I will say that when I've played Quende, he feels a little bit more like an enchantment. Kind of. Like, I, not that often do I rumble with Quende. <laughs> you mean, know, four mana 2-2, two -two, even with double strike, can be hard to get into the red zone without a lot of help. Ah, but, I mean, if, you, if you're in blue-white like Oliver is, then there's a lot of backup or ways to give it flying or, you know. Just mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Pegasus Corsair into Quende. Have you ever seen his pet Pegasus Corsair? Yeah, Corsair's. that's what I'm saying. It's got a stable of those things. All right, Jan has decided, yes, I'm going to play this island. What else you got, Jan? Four mana, five for instance and sorceries. So if there's like a fiery intervention, they can cast that. Tempest Jin for three blue, no? Okay, just a Clarion Scholar. Oh, you really are a runner. dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> G2 Lava Runner looks pretty bad here. I have to imagine there's at least one or two Adelies in Sanders' deck. I'm going to find out. Right? The, all four of those creatures oh, I'm are with wizards. You. I'm with you. Yeah, Adelie is almost guaranteed to be in the deck. And boy, that card is good. Let's see here. Gold. Or multicolored. Only one. Good enough. Yeah, plenty. And you just imagine casting that next turn and then just like an opt. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. I want to see that now. Yeah, yeah I Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on board for that one. So the Honor Guard's going to hit the red zone. And Jan's in kind of an interesting spot because normally there would be a trade here easily, maybe the Scholar, something like that. Right. But if he is on the Adelie's plan, you know, having as many Wizards on the battlefield as possible is pretty important. It is, but, man, I'm, I'm oh, you got it. even more tempted to just block with the Arcanist and the Lava Runner. Mm -hmm. Like force an action or you're just trading away for one of your lesser... Creatures. I like that a lot. Because you would trade either one of those. Oh, yeah. Problem. In a heartbeat. Let's we'll see if Jan comes up with that line as well. Presumably there's not a second instant or source screen graveyard. Otherwise, Lava Run, I think, would just immediately hop in front. Yeah, I think it's just Goblin Barrage in the, in the yard for now. No, oh, he's actually going to trade off one of his higher power threats. Okay. And it's Juggernaut land wow. go from Oliver, too. And that too. worked out really well for Oliver, as now the Juggernaut can't straight up trade with the Gitu Dirty Mage. That, Jeez. like, you, I don't know if you, it's funny, you just catch these little body language things, but, like, Oliver played that so quickly, and he was so happy. Yep. Now, the good news for Jan is that he has a replacement. But this is a little bit more precarious of a position. Oh, is that a, was that a Pegasus Courser? I didn't see. I think it was. A turn too it's late, but it's gonna late. be yeah, gonna be real good with Quende. Oh, or just Big Daddy. Maybe it wasn't. It's fine too. Good mana efficient play, Cold Water Snapper. I want to see Snapper looks good here too. I want to see a legendary Snapper, Marshall. Oh, I know what you're thinking. I want to see it. You want to see some wings? Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Ding. So unless. Jan has like a blink of an eye for the Sarah's wings and a multi-block. This is going to be very, very <laughs> quick. Well, I'll tell you what, that cold water snapper is a legend in my mind. And it's a legend on the battlefield oh, too, God. so GG. 5-6 flying vigilance lifelink hexproof <laughs> legendary. Uh. Well, it has it all. It also just changes the clock so significantly. Like, 
10 point life swing? Unbelievable. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, I mean, if you're sitting in Yon seat, any chance of a race. I mean, just last turn, he played D2 Journey Mage and is like, take two. Yeah, all right. That might be relevant now. It's like, no, 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 no. Ay, ay. Oliver continues to slam. The only better thing was would be if it <laughs> randomly gave first strike as well and then double striking yeah. with Quinn. <laughs> then we'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was a courser. Okay, he did that have that in his yeah, hand. Yeah, it was just a but. mana efficiency play that he made. But this is all bad news here for Cassandra because now he has to deal with the cold water snapper of legendary fame. But also, Quende plus Pegasus courser is lethal. <laughs> well, he says, I'll take a chump blocker, I guess, with my in uh. clutches. Yoink. Legendary Pegasus, legendary turtle. Yeah, we know who wins that to? fight. You'd think a Pegasus could just smash a turtle, but that's not how it works. Not when the turtle's the size of an island. That's right. Well, it looks like Oliver Two's about to snap off a win here. Still fighting the good fight. An opt to dig, but he's going to need... I don't even know what at this point. Yeah, blink of an eye. Blink of an eye. But that doesn't save him, you know, long term. It just buys him a little time, right? I think he had enough power to trade away then with the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but then it's back in his hand, sure. and he puts it on Quende okay, and kills well, it. I mean, I, that's not my point. Is I that guess, like, yeah. You're totally right that that is what he needed to like get the ball rolling stage one. Right. But it still felt bad. Yeah. And He would need to go runner, runner. And there's even worse news. He didn't have it. <laughs> so that's game. And, in fact, match going to Oliver 2 as he dispatches of young Cassander in two straight games. We're going to check in now on our bottom table. This is the one that we started out on. Mm-hmm. I really like this deck from Niels Mulla. This is green-white tokens with a lot of ways to pump the team. History of Benalia to pump the Knights. Song of Fraley's to pump everything. Charge to pump everything. And Benalish Marshall to pump everything. I mean, he's got it all. All right, it looks like he is really going on on that wide plan. He opted to play an untamed Kavu unkicked, even though he has five mana, because oh, he wanted to me. develop out his Jousting Lance as well. Oh, it makes me queasy, man. Uh, the thing is, that, like, even if you put the Lance on the Kavu, four power is not great versus the Omnivore. We could just, just sack a random creature and become a, f well, 6-6 six, six in this case, because of the Spore Crown pumping it up already. When I read untamed Kavu, I just put the kicker up at the top. And yeah, it, it's not an alternate cost. It is, it's just the cost. It's the cost, right? And you, you do it when you must or when you can just win immediately. Right. But like curve out perfectly and that's your two drop. But yeah. Or you're going to miss a land drop and you need a blocker. And sure, yeah. You're like, ooh, ooh. what is this? Seven mana? <laughs> oh, Territorial <laughs> oh Allosaurus. Oh, God, Aegis Sarah Angel. That has wow. to be one of the best targets. That is disgusting. And now look how bad this Untamed Kavu feels. It can't equip and attack into a 5-5. Five five. It's just like... I can't look. I'm not looking at the screen oh, anymore. Yeah, yeah. Not until that Kavu's gone. That's a Kavu of shame right there. Oh, I can't block either. Do love me an Allosaurus, though. Boy, that card's good. Not not fancy. Yeah. But goodness <sighs> sakes, it's good. What can Niels do at this point? Like it, it's just a snowball effect, you know. Playing that as a two-two and not playing as at a five-five last turn. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Trying to be mana efficient. I mean, there are draws in the deck for Niels that you could think of if he had answers for the threats, but he doesn't. And uh, this Allosaurus and the Omnivore are just too big? Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't be too big, but they are now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. see, because last turn you kick, play the Kavu. The Omnivore doesn't even get to attack anymore. The Allosaurus just eats your Sarah, but you don't take four. Like, you could equip the Lance and attack for seven first strike trample vigilance and then pass and then maybe trade and go off from there. But yeah. as it stands, let's see. Neil's at three, has to block the Allosaurus and the Omnivore. Those are both lethal threats. Neil's tapped the Llanowar Elf instead of the Plains, maybe signify like, signifying a healing grace? Is there anything else only that I can... Card, only okay. card that comes to mind, except for Charge. Oh, okay, Charge, sorry. That's, mm -hmm. And we know he has at least one in his deck still, so that must be what it is. Yeah, yep. I mean, he has it in his hand. 
Can he leverage a charge here? He can. It doesn't really work out beautifully for him, but he will get to trade charge and one of these blockers for the Allosaurus. But he's still chump blocking the other. Surviving, but uh, not yeah, winning. Not winning. So Kavu goes down, Allosaurus goes down, probably. And then other knight token dies too. Mm -hmm. And Niels is bored. Well, it's going to be a knight token and a jousting lance versus three creatures, including an omnivore. And this I may have spoken too soon. Infection. Yeah, so this will actually let him take out both creatures. Nice. While still losing his Allosaurus in the process. Yeah, he also gets a sapling, which is relevant. It's Absolutely. a 2 2. It's good. I like that play a lot. Very heads up because it means no board state. That nope. survives. Yep, that survives. Oh, why not? Just a 4 4 as well. <laughs> Just more boom booms. Land go. And I think we're going to get and a game three yeah, there. Yeah, Strosky finishes off. Nils Mola in that game. They're going to go to game number three. So right back at you. See, our time walk match is a nice one as well. Dave Williams, Paul Rietzel. I can't quite. It's actually Yelger on the end there. Oh, not uh, Sperling this time, huh? Nope, didn't make the trip. What did we get up to here? It's a lot of mana for uh, Shahar. I see both players have a ton of mana. Oh, two life. Okay. Well, we got a game then. Yes, we do. And a time of ice on the other side of the battlefield for Dominic. It's going to make life very difficult here for Shahar. Facing down two lethal threats. Okay, that Fire Fist Adept is enough to kill the knight. Yeah, it's really solid here. Boy, it sure is. Target that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. response. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Don't bounce. Oh, he's going to kill. Cast down response yeah. to the trigger. Yep, that and, will do it. And that works because the trigger will still happen, but it will be reduced by one as it checks the number of wizards when it resolves. So now the Knight of Malice just takes a single point. Oh! Oh, look at this wow. backup plan from Shahar Shenhar. Goblin Chain Whirler <laughs> is going to finish it off. And he even has the Chronicler. Now he really probably, yes, he has Goblin Barrage in Graveyard. He would have preferred it to go right the first time. Right. But now that he actually has a double block for the Guardian, and that works. Yeah, that kind of stabilizes for Shahar. Looks like Dominic has another That's few threats in hand. Yeah, it's a good stabilization, though, because remember, he just picked up oh. those two cards. Is that Slime Dog Millionaire? No, I, I think he has a Rona in his hand, so he can Rona oh, back to right. Time of Ice. Oh. Time of Ice tap down the Chronicler. Is that a good play? And then force the Chain Whirler to chump. A 3-3 first striker chumping is not a good feeling. Is that a Frixian Scriptures yes, too? Yes, it absolutely oh is. Oh, my and gosh. He, and he has an artifact creature. Oh, my gosh. He's, Dominic's probably like, well, this isn't full value, though, since it was already <laughs> an artifact creature. <laughs> scriptures. Huh. All right. Well, it can't die now. Correct. Yeah. So he's making it very hard for Shahar to play any creatures the following turn. And I like this because he had the Glider to follow up as well. Glider's lethal. Yeah. Okay. I think the Rona Time of Ice play was also fine, but th this is really, really solid. As and, and he has that play still exactly. available. Yep. Oh, my goodness sakes. Shahar has a lot of cards in hand. He had a bunch when we came in, and then two of them went back to hand as well. So he's got a lot going on. There's Scriptures. Next turn, all non-artifact creatures are going bye-bye. Yeah, Shahar just has too many random creatures in his hand that yep. just don't do anything in the face of the scriptures. So might as well attack in if it's going to die anyways. Oh, he's thinking about a fight with fire here. Oh, ah, you're right. Yeah. Well, he can't block. <laughs> Dom Dominic's like, okay, what can I lose to? Fight with fire is definitely yep. the top of that list. Yep. He took it. Okay. Well, I think Shahar would slam it if he had it, but that's definitely something that, you know, if Dominic had a cast down or something, you'd have to consider. And oh, I think there's no more good news on that scriptures. I think the answer is if you were Dominic and you had a cast down, you would use it. I think so, too. Yeah. You are so far ahead right now. Academy Journey Mage 
is interestingly going to return the ground creature, <laughs> but... Oh, Radiating Lightning to finish oh it off. Oh, so my... Wow, Shahar is really scrapping. Yeah, but the issue here is now that the Guardians is bounced. Dominic can wipe the board and then replay the Guardians, get the scriptures back again. Because oh it's a, it's a historic you're card. You're totally right. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, he gets to rebuy his <laughs> that scriptures. That is so mean. Wow, I really like how Shahar's managed this, but there's no way yep. he's going to be able to overcome. Like, it wouldn't be surprising just to see the Guardians bounce the scriptures, actually play out the scriptures this turn, just so that if Shahar plays some random blockers, they would die on your next turn. Oh, he, he's thinking about bouncing the Rona here instead of the scripture. Just to save it from uh, the scriptures? I think you just bounce the, the scripture. I agree. Because Rhone is also a lethal threat. Yes. Do it, Dominic. Yeah, pick up it. Pick it up. Reset your saga. No. <laughs> <laughs> His teammates are saying something to him. Uh, no. Fine. Truth is, he's going to win either way. Maybe. You know, I mean... Not having the scriptures to reset is a way for Shahar to get back in this game. Okay. He needs to find removal for the glider and a blocker on the ground. Right. He has the Cyclops for the... Uh-oh. This is, this is a big Or the discard. Raider. Yeah, or the Raider for the Guardians. Uh, is that up? <laughs> oh, sweat. Oh, oh it's Wizard's, Wizard's lightning. lightning. He actually hit. Okay. Shahar looking at it says, I think I'll keep this one. <gasps> Is there going to be some big backfire here? Oh, gosh. Well, so... Wait, but he needs another creature on top of that. No, he doesn't. Well, he can Rona back the Time of Ice, right? Yes, well... Wait. He's casting Squee. Oh, he must have a land play. He does. Okay. Okay, so that works. That does work. <laughs> oh, my and gosh, he, So And he needed to play Squee here because the scripture, remember, exiles the opponent's graveyard. Right. Oh, actually, I guess that doesn't matter because you can play from exile as well. I guess. D does it does it exile all graveyards? No, no, just the opponents. Okay, yeah. so he will still have the time of ice Correct. available. Right. And yeah, you can play Squee from either place. But Shahar actually pulled this off at least to not die this turn. Well, actually, I think he's still dead because of the fungal infection. Oh, fungal infection will kill him. Yeah, fungal infection You're to Squee. Right. Yep, fungal infection does it. Then get Rona something. Right. Well, I mean, Dominic has to go for it first. Yeah, but it does work because he can go Rona, Time of Ice, tap. Oh, he's just attacking the... Okay. Oh! Shahar buys Shahar time. snaps it off. <laughs> oh, my God. He's still alive. Shahar Shahar refusing to die. Wow, Dominic wow, wow, just wow, wow. cracking the door open just and Shahar just that was putting his needed, foot yeah. through it. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. I mean, it's still going to be very, very hard for... Oh. Untap it? Oh, wait. So, draw killed an Overseer one time? Darn it. Oh, <laughs> I didn't get there. <laughs> Boy, that one seemed like it got wow, 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 a wow. lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be. But ultimately, Dominic Prochek does win that match, and that's the first match going to that side. So, the round is up in the air. And it's on this game three, which is right where we started. Yep. Green, white, go wide versus green, black stuff. And there's our boy. Looks like Niels went turn two, spore crown, turn three, lance, turn four. No, no. yeah, turn four, equip and play a tapped land. Yep. He and does have three tapped lands in his deck. That means slime foot. Down to three omnivore four. Okay. Yeah, we got a game here. Oh yeah. The spore crown salad with a jousting lance plan does not work well against Slimefoot, but it takes a while for Slimefoot to get right. his feet under yep. him. Get his foot under him. Ooh, here we go. Call it cavalry. Okay. Moving forward here for Niels. Both players seem to be curving out here at least somewhat. 
Ooh, no play. He's like, just passing? Yeah, might okay. want to just activate Slimer, or maybe well, he's got some instant. I mean, activating Slimefoot's real good here, right? Make, Very good. Make a 1-1, one, one, sack it to Omnivore, gain a life, make your opponent lose a life, gain another 2 life from the Omnivore sacking the... Yeah, so this is just... A and soak up the hit right, from exactly. the... Right, exactly. Wow, yeah, that is... Boy, oh boy, that's a big swing. Mm -hmm. Also, the Knights have to stay home. Oh, I like that. Yeah, if Niels has a way to deal with Slimefoot, this would be a good time to do it. He doesn't, though. Although but he kicked he the Kabu this Kabu. time. He did so. kick the Kabu. <laughs> he did unlock that achievement. Uh. But Straski has to be at least somewhat relieved because the truth is, as long as he keeps hitting his lands, by the way, eviscerate off the top four. Nice. There, the Kabu is actually not big enough to get through either. Well, I mean, with the jousting lance, the Kabu is going to be an issue. That's so true. That's true. I think you just got to fire off the eviscerate here if you're on your Andre, unless you have a really good creature play. Definitely. And there it goes. Wow, right off the top of the library. Beautiful draw step there for Andre Strosky. Trying to win this round for his team. Niels yeah. has Jan and Dominic next to him. Oh, that's right. This is the winning in. Yeah. Absolutely. So lock the players for day two. In good shape, too. Yeah, both teams are in good place, but yeah, man, 6-0. Just a couple of rounds left on day one after that, and boy, you could be in a really good position. But first things first, secure that day two slot. Mm -hmm. The winning team here will do just that. All right, so what's the game plan here from Meals? He doesn't actually have any good attacks, even with moving the Lance around. I mean, any of his creatures would just be four twos. Omnivore on the board can get large. I just main phase using his memorial. Yeah. Doesn't feel great, but there is a Yavamaya Sap Herd. Okay, that's not awful, as the Sap Herd is a 3 3 with the Spore Crown on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And it makes a 2 2 Sapperling. So, and Neil's next turn can set up a Lance over to the Sap Herd, attack for 5 for a strike. Force the issue. Yeah. I mean, Andre already at 10 life, so. Yeah. I guess the downside here, though, is just that Spore is that the uh, the combo is just so online. I mean, you can make that thing into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Right, yep. Or just hard cast a 7-7. Seven, seven. He's just going to go for the 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so he's just holding up the activation of Omnivore. Looks like he's a little bit short anyways to kick yeah, it. He needed an extra mana. I'm a little bit irked that the uh, sapling's between the two knights right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's bugging you. <laughs> Put them together. All right, and this is the line we see. I wouldn't be surprised if Andre just chumps with the uh, sapling here. That or double block and make something happen, but 5-2 first striker is kind of awkward here to block when you don't have an extra sapling to produce with slime foot. I'm, I'm, I think I'm with you. No trample's nice, which is why he can do that. Like, what's your game plan if you double block with Omnivore and, and Gorger, you know? It's like I think Niels would order the Omnivore first. Definitely. Because that's the only creature that really stops any of your 2-2s two with a Lance from attacking in. Yeah, as the Bailout the Gorger wouldn't be a great blocker right, still. So then you'd attack the Sapperling and probably the Gorger. Right. But now you just did all that to kill it, you know. Exactly. Half of a car. It's you. You can't keep repeating that. No, ah, he might be thinking about it. Oh, but in the end, indeed, it is the sapling. So drain you for one. I gain three life. Yeah, pretty good. Andre's ready to go to his turn, but uh, Neil says, Ooh. hold on a sec. I've got fungal plots. And another memorial. His, that's sense. the last memorial in the deck. Yeah. A little bit of a non-bow. The fungal plots working with cards like Call the Cavalry. It means he just has only one cre actual creature in his graveyard right now. Oh, nice with the Spore Crown, though. Definitely. 
I mean, this is one of those positions where Slimefoot will just take over the game if Niels cannot find some more pressure. We were talking about this. The mini game? Yep. But it's not even that much of a mini game for Niels since he doesn't have removal. So he's, he's going to be forced to, well, non seal away removal that we know of, anyways. So unless he finds like a blessed light, I think Slimefoot wins this. It's like one of those things you look 10 turns down the line. Right. You know, and Andre has won this, but getting there might take a while. Yeah, which is good news for Niels in the sense that, okay, I'm behind. I'm not going to win if we go forever, but you know what? If I get five, six draw steps to try to find my removal right. spell, mm -hmm. maybe you could find his way out of this. Also, let's not forget that Niels has ways to pump his entire squad. Uh, he did sideboard out one of the charges. Right, but he still has one, yep. and he has Song of Fraley's. And he might actually, does he have a wild onslaught? That I would be very good, I did not see too. one, but that's a good question. This is the deck that wants it. That's for dang sure. Ancient Animus, though, is going to actually kill Spore Crown Thalad here, Kenji. Oof. Yeah. And then we're going to see the Omnivore step in front, sack, and become a 5-5. And that Yavamaya Sapper is only four power now. So it just got eaten up, as well as the Drain You for one I gain three. This is a not great turn of events there for Niels and company. So d was it the Gorger that fought the, uh, the it was. ground? Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Pegasus was a great draw, though. That's one of the cards that Niels was looking for to really push the issue. Yeah, the problem is that it's so hard to race the Omnivore. It is, yeah. It's, I mean, it's effectively three life. life. Yeah, it's, yeah. Gone, it's gone up by six over the last two turns. Right. And all he's done is tap five mana to do it. Right. And he's hit his land drops. I mean, he's still got a lot of mana to give. So I think if you're Niels, you're, you probably start... Ca oh, and a pierce the sky. Okay. Brutal. Send that horse down. It's so awkward that the fungal plots, he wants the creatures to uh -huh. go wide, but he also needs the card draw. Like, I think that was a Mesa Unicorn. Oof. But with cards like Song of Free Elise, Charge, you know, he really does want to keep most of those creatures is, is the issue. But when you don't have any good attacks like this and your opponent's just pressuring you so hard with the the Omnivore Slimefoot combo, I think you need to cash in. Just start cashing in two Sapperlings? Yeah, I would have cashed in two Sapperlings before using Memorial just in case, but... I mean, at this point, Niels might figure he wants to block with the Sapperlings and then just draw a card. Yeah, this one really has gotten away from him to the point that Andre's going to start attacking him at some yep. point. Yep. Also, Andre probably understands, after ha having seen Song of Freilis in Game 1, that he can't sit here forever. There are cards that actually punish him. Oh, he's in such a good position with that killer combo. Salad, Omnivore, and Slimefoot. Friends forever. GGOP. And the thing is, like, that's that's a great hit, right? A 3-2 flyer is awesome for Niels. It doesn't outrace the 3 life. <laughs> it's uh, funny. It doesn't even... It just keeps up with it. Yeah. Well, I, I guess with the Lance, it can do something. Oh! <laughs> Burden <laughs> Forest for Andre Strosky. How about free Sapperlings? And yes. So instead of winning over the course of 10 turns, it'll probably be like 5 now. Yep. Yeah, now it's every upkeep, of course, is getting them, and this one just about in the books at 16 life, especially if Andre gets to untap. The real issue here for Niels, though, is that now he needs two removal spells, because even if he were to kill Verdant Force, he's still facing down that same combo that yep. you and I were loving anyway, and he didn't kill Verdant Force, so... So it's three saplings a turn now. Well, four every turn cycle, basically. Yep with eight mana available for double slime foot and then the Verdant Force producing one each turn. Salad Omnivore is basically just a nearly lethal, if not lethal, threat every time now. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Neil start to chump. I think he has to. I think he's 
block with a fungus and then sack two draw card game two. Yep. Because with an om unblocked omnivore, every sapper uh, represents three damage. So three, six, nine, twelve already right there, just in the sapperlings. There's throwing sapperlings all over the table. On your upkeep, I get one. You make one with fungal plots. My upkeep, I get one. Make two with slime feed on your end step. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, Yafamaya Sapper, it's a fine magic card, but just not what he wants to be doing. Andre says, I'm going to spend eight mana on your end step and make two Sapper links on my turn. I'm going to get another one on my upkeep. Holy moly. Hit me. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Spore Crown Salad. <laughs> How many of these can get in? Only now, one of them has now he's getting, sickness. He's getting four two twos every turn. <laughs> or every turn cycle. Every every time it comes back to him, he just has four extra two twos. Jeez. <laughs> Come on. Maria's shaking her head over there. <laughs> She's seen enough. Uh, I think we all have. Like this I said, it's nonsense. Like, we knew this game was over. It's just gonna take ten turns for Andre to finish it up. Yeah. Wow. Boy, if you're going to win the win your match to put your team through the round and into day number two, this is the way to do it. Nice and slow, yep. grinding them out. Inevitability all over the place. So I think Neil sacrificed four saplings, so he's going to gain four, draw two. He's going to lose most of his board, and Andre's going to lose some saplings. He'll get those back. <laughs> he will get them back. <laughs> he's going to get more back. Yeah, he'll have more he than lost. he yeah. just lost. <laughs> Yeah, we have one more turn here, basically. Ugh. No legendary creatures on the battlefield for Neil. Yeah, so no ruinous blast. Like ruinous blast, because that's the type of card that you think about here. Well, sure, but then Slimefoot still sits oh, on know. the battlefield. Oh, I know, buddy. <laughs> I know how it works. Yeah. Still, that would at least give him a chance. No, because it exiled all those permanents. Yeah, he's uh, dead. Okay. He's, he's been dead. Yeah, he's been dead. On the bright side, he did play a kicked Kabu this game. He did. They can never take that from him. Correct. Even though it died. Yeah, his hand is just not going to do it. He's got Gift of Growth. Okay. Well, it, like, and, I, and I think he has Ancient Animus, perhaps. So how does he how does he get back in this game? He might have to attack and try to force something, but the problem is that Andre can still just sack a bunch of sapperlings to gain three, per three life per sapperling. This like, is ridiculous. He has five sapperlings on the battlefield right now, so he's 15 life just sitting there. <laughs> like, what? Okay. <laughs> sure. Like, take nine, go to five. You got me? Ancient Animus to try to fight Slimefoot with the new and improved super big Avon Sentry. All right, so that's, that is big. Like, We'll see if Strowski wants to sacrifice some saplings in response just to gain one extra life per token. I mean, with one green mana up, Strowski can just do some math here. There's only two creatures on the other side yep. of the battlefield. He may just ha have lethal. Remember, the Spore Crown Fowl is staying alive. Nope, looks like he's going to produce multiple tokens. And remember, these are still two twos. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. the Spore Crown's still there, so. Right click attack all. Yeah, just jam. Wait, what is this? He's going to use the Memorial to get back Slimefoot. Who's <laughs> having fun seems, now? Seems about right. All right. Play Slimefoot. Do it. Two hands. Yeah. Do it. Right, so optimal blocks even. I mean, this is just way too much damage. In. So Sapling blocks the Verdant Force. Avon can block Omnivore. Like, Fungus blocks another one. Or Fungal Plots block. Okay, so he can block the three biggest. Let's see. 
Blocks Omnivore, blocks Burton Force, blocks Bayloth Gorger. Yep, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, put you to 5. Uh, and Andre does not have 5 mana to sacrifice and kill. Okay. So he lives another turn, at the very least. Because Niels is going to sacrifice the two tokens and gain some life. But it looks like... And he okay. says, okay. All right, I've, I've had, had enough. I've had enough. Like, if, if you're losing all your creatures, then you're not going to win. So, you know. Yeah. So a good win there for Andre Strosky and company. They are going to be 6-0. and And that's a powerhouse team. Shahar, yeah. Andre, and Oliver. That is no joke. <laughs> We're going to be keeping our eye on them as we work our way through the day. Yep. They've, uh, they're into day two, though. We're going to be seeing them tomorrow no matter what. Uh, the other team's not out of it, though. Don't, remember, don't forget that. They still have a good chance to, to make right. day two. They're just going to have to win one of their next two rounds. Or actually, they can actually uh, win one of the next rounds in their end. So they're yeah, they're five and one. Yeah, yeah so they they're okay. To, they yep. have to completely lose out to not get there. So I like their chances. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll have more magic here from DC.
here at Grand Prix Washington, D.C. That's Ken Agashera, I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and we're bringing you coverage live here of Team Sealed today and tomorrow, and then we're going to be doing some team draft later in the day tomorrow. Let's head on and down to Time Walk for this round. We've only got a few minutes to go, so we're going to come in pretty late here. hey -o. As you can see, Eli Cassis has defeated Paul Ritzel. Dave Williams defeated Shaheen Sarani. And that means Yelger Vigersma is up against Noah Walker to decide who's going to win this clash. Wait a minute. Didn't we, we interviewed Noah, and he said he had no win cons. I see two right of bells unlock in his graveyard and an unta untamed Kavu on the battlefield there. Liar! I think he's lying. <laughs> I think you can win with six sixes. Nature spiral to get back the right of bells unlock, too? Real? <laughs> he really is on that grind. Wow, what a grind. But he is facing down a Zahid. And an Icy. And an Icy, yeah. yeah, so... This could be tough for Noah Walker, the Hall of Famer, Yelgar Vigersma. Wait, was that an Invoke the Divine? He's not messing around. I think it was. I think he's going to kill the right. Yeah. Oh, man. Wrong of Bells, Bells and Long <laughs> this time. <laughs> Boom. Up to 14, or excuse me, 13 life. Now, does he have an attack in the air? No, because then he'll take too much damage from the Kabu on the ground. I see. He has to keep tapping the demon and down. And he's tapping the demon with yep. the Icy. So unless he drew an Eviscerate here. Or another settle the score. I think that was his second settle, right? Oh, my. Oh, yeah. The score has been well and truly settled. Yeah, and you know what? Noah can only attack with three power next turn. Okay, this is really good for Yelger. And let's not forget that that demon... Yep. He's hungry. Yes. Not a creature that you want to get icied. Not at all. Like, you would rather it just get eviscerated or something. Totally. Because now it's not... Uh, not a may. Here's Dark Bargain. All right, lose this some is, life. This is risky business, but boy, this could find him what he needs. An answer for Zahid would do quite nicely. Right, yes. That would be very good. That ain't it. But he might have it next turn if it costs like four mana. Mm. Still, you got to like Yelger's position here. Two turn clock in the air with an icy manipulator. And even that tome has the ability to get him some cards. He's got a lot of mana. Yep. I even see that he has Chainer's Torment of all cards in his yard. So that thing's just tap three draw card right now. Interesting deck here for Vigersma. Yeah, very controlled. He has three Skittering Surveyors I saw. So he's just straight up Yeah, but so what's value. that Torment doing in there? Not a, not a card I associate with the control deck. No, decks. I don't think so either. But, uh, I mean, maybe he just needs extra win cons. Sure. History of Banalia. Another nice. really nice card here. Yeah, pretty good. Boy, I'm jealous. This deck from Yelger looks great. That's three first strike damage. Indeed. Because of the white permanence. But he doesn't have and anything else. Yep. Wow. And that's going to do it. Paul Rietzel, Dave Williams, and Yelger Vigersma are through today number two no matter what. And the perfect 6-0 start as well. So really good stuff from, uh, from that team. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly one that we're going to be watching. Now, we're going to take another break. And apologies that they got so crammed close You're to right. each other. But we do have to switch over our booth. And we're setting up for our next round of live action. It's just that our main round took so long uh, <laughs> with the, the, the too real many things, play. Though. Yeah, I went to the third match and the third game of the third match. And then it was that slow slapper. <laughs> slapper <-ling. laughs> that actually might be more accurate. <laughs> a grind that uh, got us there. So we are going to take another short break. But I promise you when we come back, we're going to have Maria and JVL in the booth. And we're going to bring you more live action here from D.C. Don't go anywhere.